So it's a very nice, happy feeling that we are now trying to learn self knowledge, Atma Bodha. So before going into the subject, because it is an Advaitic text, let's um, think of some of the points or ideas of Advaita, what Advaita actually means. So Advaita Vedanta. The system of Advaita, the, the system derives its name from the fact that it recognizes Brahman alone as the reality. Reality in itself we need to understand what is reality, the definition of reality. The definition of reality according to Advaita is Satya Trikalabhadita Satya. Truth that is not sublated in the three past, present, future of the time. Time has different dimensions. In all the three dimensions, the truth remains same. It was it is, it will be. That's the definition of truth. So when we see this definition, nothing stands still other than Brahman. Brahman alone is the reality. And the system denies any permanent reality to the world and to the beings, the souls. Not a permanent reality. It has a place, but then it's not the ultimate ultimate reality is only Brahman, only Brahman. And the whole edifice of the system is built on this idea, which is derived from the Upanishadi statement. Sadaiva Sambhu Idamagra Asi Eka Meva Dhikiyam O child, in the beginning, beginning in the sense even before the creation. We know in Vedanta, creation is not that it happened the other day, this 2000 years back. Creation is eternal. It is cyclic. Thousands of creations have come and thousands will come more. The, but Brahman is the only reality that is always there, one without the second. Sadaiva Sahmi, Idamagra Asi. Brahman alone exists, the one without the second. It is from this idea, this Advaita name has been given to the system. But then multiplicity of the universe is a fact of our daily experience, which we cannot deny. So the system has to explain as to how Brahman, which is one without the second, has become this world of multiplicity, names and forms. And the answer given to this in the Advaita system is Anirvachaniya Khyati. A bit of Sanskrit terms I'll give you, but then I always will explain it and I will not repeat it. Try to not repeat it. It's called as Anirvachaniya Khyati. Erroneous perception. And this idea defies logic. This idea. So you cannot logically explain it. And the stock example you all know you are used to this is perception of silver in oyster shell or and snake in the rope. This is the stock example in the Advaita system because it fits in very well in this in its idea, that is why. And in a moonlit night, you can see in the beaches, lot of twinkling, twinkling shells are there, looks like silver. And then in insufficient light, we can 
see a snake in the road, we can easily make this mistake that a snake is lying. So this is the idea. This erroneous perception is brought about by the impression of silver and snake in the previous. If you had never seen silver or if we had never seen rope, I mean snake, the, uh, this false uh, perception wouldn't have been there. But we know, we have seen silver, we know silver, we know snake. So, but now we have put it in a wrong place. We have put it in a wrong place. And under the circumstances, very favorable to this sort of erroneous perception. And this erroneous perception is called as adhyaropa. Adhyaropa, that is superimposition, which is brought about by false knowledge. False knowledge. So the object perceived, that is the silver, and the snake, I'm giving both the example. Silver in the shell, snake in the rope. Huh? What is the status of this object? What's the nature of this object? We have got silver and we have got snake. What's the nature of this object? Is it real or is it unreal? Advaita Vedanta says it's neither real nor unreal. Very strange. How? It is not unreal. Seeing that we see the silver, we see the snake, it impinges on us. It has an effect on us. A fear arises in us to be away from it. Ah, ah for a greedy man, ah, there's a silver. So this sort of idea it brings so that it's real. And it is not unreal like flowers growing in the space. We say Akash Kusum, flowers never grow in the sky or horns of the rabbit. Rabbits don't have horns. It's not unreal like that. It is not, it is real in the sense it is perceived by our eyes and it creates an emotion of fear in us. So to that extent, it's real. But it is also not unreal because the moment you bring the right knowledge, put a flash of light, the snake immediately disappears. When the adhishthana, the subtractum is perceived, it disappears in a second. You cannot say, Mataji, I saw the tail of the snake. No, nothing from top to bottom, everything disappears. That means to say, it is not real. It is not real or it is not unreal. It's a, a peculiar phenomenon. Just to explain this peculiar phenomenon, out of logical necessity, Shankaracharya posts this third perceived object. He calls it Sadasad Vilakshana, something different from the real and unreal. And incapable of any precise definition. So he calls it anirvachanena, which cannot be explained. That's it. You cannot explain it. It's a fact of experience. Maya is a statement of fact. Swami Vivekananda says in his lecture on Maya and the evolution of the universe. So this erroneous conception is caused by agnana, avidya, ignorance. Nasians. And when we say Ajnana, ignorance, you have always heard me this telling. It is not something negative. Like suppose many of many people do not know how to cook, but that does an effect. They can manage life. Somebody do not know music. It's all right. You, you still, even if you do not know the science of music, you enjoy the music. It doesn't affect. But the ignorance of Vedanta has practical effect on us. It changes the very uh, what do you call perspective of our life. When you say something real, you, have, you accept it as real. You can never say no, it is unreal. 
So it has an impact on us. That is why it is called as bhava rupa, something positive. It's something positive, but you cannot explain. He has already said it cannot be explained. Don't ask me the explanation. It's a fact, but it is something very positive. And how does this ignorance work? It has two powers. Avarana Shakti, Vikshepa Shakti. Avarana Shakti is a veiling power. And Vikshepa Shakti is transforming power. It hides the reality and by apparently transforming into something. It hides the reality. Avarana, it's covered. The reality is covered. And in its place, it transforms apparently. Right? Remember always this. It, this transformation is apparent. Only then we will understand Advaita. If you think the transformation is real, gone. No. You can never understand Advaita. The transformation is always apparent, seemingly transformed. And like the silver and the snake are have been trans apparently transformed. The rope and the silver, I mean the shell, the shell and the snake or a rope have been transformed apparently into silver and snake. But it is that this transformation is not real. That's because it is not real, that's only we are safe. And this theory is called as vivartha. The snake, silver and the snake are the vivartha of shell and the uh, rope. Vivartha. Just apparent transformation. Always this is a very, very important um, idea or concept in Advaita Vedanta. Now, the question is, how the world of duality has evolved out of the non-dual Brahman, which the Upanishads say, quote. The, the world itself is divided into two. Subject, the drik, the seer. Object, the drishya, the seen. These are the two division in the world, material world or the world of multiplicity. It is through maya, avidya. It is the maya or avidya that causes Atman or Brahman. And the Upanishad uses both Atman and Brahman alternatively. It means the same. Because essentially they are one and the same. Supposing I tighten my fist and there is a space in my fist, inside the fist, that is the space. And there is space outside the the space that is confined, limited by my fingers, the hand, is the Atman. And the space which is free is Brahman. The space which is confined within the walls of this heart is the Atman. The space outside, the free out space, vast, infinite, beyond the planets, beyond our cosmos, is Brahman. But as far as space is concerned, it is indivisible. So Brahman and Atman is one and non-dual. This is the idea. But Avidya is the ignorance which we all carry. We think we are the psychophysical organism, human beings. But whereas Maya is divine, it is Paramesha Shakti, the power of Brahman. Sri Ramakrishna says, Maya is power of Brahman. Sri Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita says, Daivi Esha Gunamam Yi Mama Maya Duratriya. This Maya is divine, my power, very difficult to cross. Those who take refuge in me, they alone are able to cross. So this Maya is, it's not like the Semitic idea of Saturn, 
It's entirely different. Whatever is there, every, the one source is divine. The one source is the ultimate reality, Brahman. It's not something different. It has come out of it, but its transformation is apparent. This always we should remember. And another point is the Advaita Vedanta recognizes three categories, three degrees of reality. Reality has degrees, variation. The first is Prati Bhasika Satya, illusory or apparent truth, which we, which I discussed right now, that is Prati Bhasika Satya. There's another Vyavaharika Satya, transactional truth. Now I said, everything is unreal. You are unreal or I am unreal. Everything is unreal and go and I will go and shoot somebody. Next day I will be behind bars. So we are, ah, there's a consequence, there's a karma. And for all our practical purpose, Vyavaharika Jagat is real. This empirical world, this relative world is real. Wherein here you can apply your ethical values, moral values and evolve. If not, the whole structure of sadhana will collapse if we do not accept this also as a degree of truth. There's a story, not story, an incident in Sri Ramakrishna's life. In that, when Sri Ramakrishna was in Dakshineshwar Panchavati, there a Vedanta monk came. You know, because the temple offered a lot of hospitality for the mendicants and people. So a lot of, many people, many mendicants and sadhus used to come. One such was a Vedanta monk. He came and he was staying there, doing his spiritual practices, I suppose, so-called. And after some time, people started gossiping about his character or whatever it is. And Sri Ramakrishna is a very plain person. So innocently, very straight, straight away, he went and asked, hello, what's the matter with you? People are talking like this. And you know what the man replied? Oh, what a uh, silly person you are. The world is unreal. Do you mean to say my relationship and my action is only real? If the world is unreal, this is also unreal. See, the deception human mind can. That is why if we don't understand this, if we do not give some relative value for this empirical truth or the Vyavaharika transactional reality, then we deceive ourselves. That is why it has some value and Shankaracharya gives it a okay? second grade. That is Vyavaharika Satya, transactional truth. Then comes the Paramarthika Satya, absolute truth, which is the only one truth, which always will remain. And it is attributeless, formless, hence incapable of any description, except in a negative way. That is why we have in this Upanishad, Neti, Neti, not this, not this. We remove all the attributes and what remains, what is, is, will remove. The isness alone remains. That is of the nature of infinite existence, infinite consciousness, infinite bliss. This is the ultimate reality. Then what's the place of God, Ishvara, theistic God? Where is this place? Advaita Vedanta recognizes it because as aspirants, we need a support. And there is the giver of fruits of our action. Ishvara is the giver of fruits of our actions. Whatever we do, it comes back. So who, some law should be there, some power should be there to exactly give, my actions are coming to very wonderful, very good, perfect computer. It will come only to me. Yours want to come to me, mine won't go to you. My actions, the results of the actions will come to me alone. Perfect. In everyone, he is there. And what's the status of that Ishwara? Brahman, associated with Maya, is Ishwara. 
Sri Swamiji gives a beautiful definition of Ishvara. Ishvara is the highest reading of the absolute by the human mind. Ishvara is the highest reading of the absolute by the human mind. So this is about Ishvara. Now, finally, can I have a cup of water? Excuse me. Now, this Brahman, Atman, has somehow got inexplicably involved in this body-mind complex. And its involvement is due to, we all know, ignorance. And it's impossible to give a logical or satisfactory explanation as to how and when this involvement began. So, the Advaita Vedanta does not enter into sophistry and just to hold on to its stand. It simply says, we do not know. We do not know how the infinite non-dual Atman Guru, which is consciousness, knowledge itself, thought itself to be a psychophysical organism. We do not know. Or it may say, it's anadi, beginningless. This ignorance is beginningless, but it has an end. How? The moment you recognize the substratum, the basis on which the superimposition is made, it disappears. And you have your independence. You get the knowledge that you are the eternal self, non-dual. So the entity which is involved within this psychophysical organism is called the jiva. An embodied being which keenly understands its weaknesses and limitations. It has five sheets. Most of you all have studied this. Food, Annamaya, Pranamaya, Manomaya, Vigyanamaya, Anandamaya. Food, vital, mind, intellect and bliss. These are the five sheets which has covered the Atman. These are all the coverings of the Atman. Or you can say it has three bodies. Gross body, the subtle body and the causal body. Gross body is this, which is made of five elements. Subtle body is mind with all its impressions. And causal body is the notion I, I am, this ego which is ignorance. So this is the three bodies. So Atman is Pancha Kosha Vilakshana other than this five Koshas, other than this three body. What is that? That is the Atman. And now this due to ignorance it is embodied because of ignorance embodiment, because of embodiment desire, because of desire karma, because of karma action Reaction and the whole chain stands. Birth and death, death and birth. Birth and death, death and birth. Jayasya, Mriyasya. Being born, being dead. This will continue as long as one does not get the knowledge of one's true nature. Who I am truly? Why I have come to this world? What is this experience that I am going through? Why should I obey the nature? Can I transcend it? What was I before I came to the body? All this are the line of reasoning which we need to do to get a conviction that we are something beyond the body and mind. For this, the Advaita Vedanta gives sadhana, sadhana chatushtaya. And the problem with us is because our identification, this false ident identification with this body and mind, tadatmya, this has to be, to be cut. You have to, you have, you have to put the axe to the very root. Asangha shastrena dhilena chitva, the Bhagavad Gita says. Put the axe to the root. Cut the very idea that you are a psychophysical or you are a man, you are a woman. That's the root cause of everything. Put the axe to the root and get away. You are infinite, immortal, non-dual, pure existence. This is the 
strength you get from the study of Advaita. It makes you stand on your own feet. It gives tremendous strength. When ordinary weakling study about it, gets immense strength. That's the positive thing about it. Even if you do not have the experience, not that overnight you are going to become, you will be having the realization. It's a long run, but you have to pre create pragna samskaras. Our now at present the mind is what sort of samskaras? It has matter, material samskaras. Now we have to give the mind steadily samskaras of knowledge. The modifications of the mind has to be slowly changed. And when it becomes perfect and endowed with all knowledge modifications, we will be reading it. It will be coming. And then, as a matter of course, liberation will come, knowledge will come, realization will come, illumination will come. So we need to follow the four principles, sadhana chatrishtana. The four, you have heard it many times, many times this has been, for 30 years, 40 years this has been repeated in this hall. Discernment, dispassion, sixfold virtues, and intense aspiration and with desire for liberation. These are the four. When to certain degree we have practiced this, we get a stability. Then we approach the teacher. The teacher gives us the great statements. The one that this Atman is Brahman. Aham Brahmasmi, Tattvamasi. These are the statements. And you hear it from the Guru. Reflect on it. Meditate on it. And as a matter of fact, in course of time, the liberation is there. So this is the gist of Advaita. Then you understand you are Nitya Shuddha Buddha Mukta Atma. You are the Atman, eternally pure, infinite, immortal, pure consciousness. This will be our knowledge. This is about the Advaita. And now we come to this beautiful text called as Atma Bodha. Atma Bodha is a treaty. Shankaracharya has written a lot of commentaries and voluminous books which are very difficult to understand. So he tries to simplify, help us to understand in simple texts. So this is one of a beautiful text. But um, the thing is, in every text, he gives a mangala charana. That means invocation prayer. But I didn't find in them. So I have taken the liberties with the acharya. And just we have changed a few, just one word of it. And I chant that. And then we start. Sadasmarami hridi sanspura dhatma tattvam sachit sukham paramaham sagatim turiyam yasvapna jagra sushupta mavaiti nityam tad brahma nishkala maham nachabhuta sangah tad brahma nishkala maham nachabhuta sangah I meditate always within my heart on the effulgent, self-effulgent Atman, the existence, knowledge, bliss absolute, the goal of the greatest ascetics, the transcendent and the eternal, who is beyond the three states of waking, dream and deep sleep. I am verily that indivisible Brahman and not a combination of material Elements. Om, peace, peace, peace. <clears throat> the first shloka. I just chant. Oh, it will be good if. Yeah. This way, na? This way? Oh. Tapo bhikshina papanam 
शातानाणाम मुमुक्षो नामेक्षोय आत्मबोधो विधीयते आई एम कंपोजिंग द आत्मबोध और सेल्फ नॉलेज to serve the needs of those who have purified through the practice of austerities and who are peaceful in heart free from cravings and desire desires of liberation so in this verse shankaracharya brings the idea who is eligible for the studies of self knowledge so in a way he is saying the eligibility required to serve what kind of people's purpose austerity who have purified whose the opaqueness of the mind has been attenuated lot of opaqueness has gone how through constant practice of austerities what are the austerities the bhagavad gita gives three type of austerities austerities of the body of speech and of mind sharira tapa va vach vacha and manas all the three and worship of gods the elders the guru and cleanliness and uprightness it's very very important uprightness and continuous brahmachari and non violence non violence that is these are bodily austerities practice to to certain extent at least if we have practice then we will be able to assimilate what the text is telling without this basic uh Uh, what do you call preparation it's very hard to understand and what are the speech anudvega karan vakyam not offense your speech truthful pleasant beneficial some people are very because they are truthful they are outspoken they do not know how they hurt others that's not a very good quality it's good to be outspoken but we should not be shamelessly outspoken it's good if you think if i speaking very uh, in that way if you can help others you are wrong you may be but you are also hurting so satyam priyam satyam bhuya priyam bhuya apriya satyam na bhuya if it is and very awkward truth but don't keep quiet the person itself will laugh him himself or herself will understand we don't have to make our mouth dirty follow so softness uh, what do you call pleasant beneficial speech and study of the scripture that's the essential instead of talking something let's chant let's read the scriptures let's chant the gita the mouth gets purified so study of the scripture that is and then what is the austerities of the mind mana prasada the calmness of the mind not disturb serenity of the mind is there kindliness silence self control and purity of the heart when these things are that these three austerities are followed with faith for a long period of time then you get the required texture of mind for grasping this reality and then what it said with austerity it is purified by all the austerities and peaceful in heart the heart is disturbed when there is attachment aversion something is very pleasant i want to acquire it that the mind is off it and something is unpleasant i want to get out of it so i try my best the mind becomes restless the heart becomes restless so control it or reason it out 
because you can never control. You control, cross it, it will bump up sometime or later. But you sublimate it, apply reason, through reason we sublimate it and keep our mind, our heart as calm as possible. And the cravings of the heart. Cravings are, the samskaras are there, always doing. So that has to be, so to a certain extent, if it is harmless desires, finish it. You want to have an ice cream, you know, have it, finish it. If it's something different, very dangerous, apply reason. You have to apply reason because we are rational beings. We are not animals instinctive. God has given us the reason. Apply the reason. And Advaita Vedanta has asked us to pray also because we are all sadhakas. At the ultimate end, it denies God. It dethrones him. God is dethroned and the self of the man is placed on the throne. Nothing. The man who is powerful, infinite, pure, established in the Atman, he alone can deny God. He alone can deny his own existence. Before denying God, I have to ex deny myself. I assert myself and I deny God. Whatever it is, it is not Advaita. I deny myself, I deny God. And the Atman, the ever pure, infinite, immortal, one non-dual reality is on the throne. So that's the idea. But when we are aware of our limitations, we pray. We pray to God. This is essential. Our spiritual life will be strengthened by prayers. There is nothing which prayers cannot do. Prayers are our intense need. It's prayer. The prayer comes from our need. Desperately we want it. We, are, we will just search, where is that power? Whatever it is, help me, we ask. But that should come from the depth of the heart. So only divine can help us in getting rid of the cravings and liberation, desire for liberation. If nothing is there, if you have the intense aspiration, intense desire for liberation, all the other virtues will come as a matter of fact. In the course of time, it will come. We don't have to. When we feel urgent for the call of nature, we just go. Nobody has to wake up. A child, Sri Ramakrishna says a beautiful story. A child, before going to bed, it, tell, it told its mother, Mother, if I get, if I have to go to the toilet, you wake me up. The little child doesn't know. Mother said, My child, I don't have to wake you up. The very urge will wake you up. So if we have that intense desire, we ourselves will wake up to the reality. So this is the first mantra, I mean shloka. Bodhonya sadhane bhyohi sakshan mokshaika sadhanam pakasya vahni vajnanam vina moksho na sidhyati as fire is the direct cause of cooking, so knowledge and not any other form of discipline is the direct cause of liberation. For liberation cannot be attained without knowledge. This is Advaita Vedanta. This is Jnana or the path of knowledge. That is why Shankaracharya has mentioned about it. That's one thing. And the other thing is, like, you have all the ingredients. Everything is in your pantry. There's no electricity. There's no gas. There is no uh, firewood. Nothing. How are you going to cook? We have everything. But fire is there. So, you will have to eat enzymes. Nothing else. No cooked food. And everybody, enzymes, I don't think, it agrees with everybody. Many people can't digest enzymes. So, you'll have to stop. So, Fire is the essential thing for cooking. So in the same way, knowledge is the one important thing, not any other. Any other disciplines means we'll say, oh, we believe in doing good to others. We go around doing good to others. And 
Radha Prasad and Dr. Radha Krishna says, it's not doing good, it's just going wrong. So very little is done. And another thing is actions. All this thing involves multi multiplicity. There's a person who is doer, who is doing the action, and there are instruments like my body, mind, intellect, and the instruments outside. All these are needed. And the result is there. So all such multiplicity is coming. Now, in Advaita, you are trying to dive deep in your, directing your mind to some an unifying reality. But if you are constantly engaged with diverse things, very little time you have got to think of unity. So hence, action or rituals or charity, but these, are, these all help you in reducing your ego. It purifies. As purification, everything is under. Uh, but with one thought, if you are doing karma yoga, it's fine. But you do any act, giving charity, I am doing this, I am doing karma yoga, I have to do karma yoga. I, I, I. Hey, you wanted to do karma yoga to just deny yourself. And you are always asserting yourself. I must do karma yoga. I do this charity. I give these things. It's all I. So, but if you are doing karma yoga, you know that you are an actionless self standing aside. Your body and mind, the nature is operating. Huh? In the Gita, he says, which is that shloka? Prakrityeva cha karmani kriyamanani sarvashaha yapashyati tadatmanam akartaram sapashyati. Prakriti, nature outside, nature within, are doing. I stand aside as the actionless self. We have every year we sing in Sri Ramakrishna's song. Tumar karma tumi koroma loke bole kuriyam. Thou workers thyself, thy own work, men only call it theirs. We sing, isn't it? So the nature does its own work. God does his own work. I am only an instrument or I am the actionless self. You stand aside and look at the fun. You will be enjoying instead of involving yourself. The moment you involve, you have to face a hundred minds, which is very difficult. So you stand aside as an actionless self and absorb. You will not be involved. Thereby, the effect of the karma will not come to you because you know you are the actionless, actionless infinite self. This is why the knowledge are if you are a devotee of God, that also I'll give, give you. If we are devotee of God, we are doing the Lord's work. Sri Ram uh, Sri Krishna says in the Mat Karma Paramobhav, Mother Thamapi, you do work, work for me. When you do work for me, it will purify your mind. I'm doing it as an offering to God. Whatever I do, I put all my um, talents and strength or power that is with me, what is, is in my resource, I give everything and do. And just leave that. Doesn't matter. I'm not interested in the result. I need not have to bother. The result will come by itself. I don't have to worry about it. I My concern is, am I doing it as a worship to God, as an offering to God? Or have I any cal calculation? If this much, if I understand, that's enough. The result will come by itself. So this is the one. So knowledge. And if we start applying the knowledge and then slowly our mind will get this pragna samskara. The modifications of knowledge will come to us. So which is which purifies the mind. And Sri Ramakrishna says, pure mind, pure intellect, and pure self is one and the same. When the mind is crystal clear, transparent. The light of the self just comes in. So, knowledge is very important. So, if 
why only knowledge why not karma why can't other things why can't i use other things to achieve the knowledge question may arise so he is saying avirodhitaya karma na vidyam vinivartayet vidya vidyam nihanti eva tejas timira sanghavat action cannot destroy ignorance for it is not in conflict with ignorance knowledge alone destroys ignorance as light destroys dense darkness action means i told you multi multiplicity the doer the instruments and the action its results so many paraphernalias are needed so it tends to diversity but knowledge alone is taking us to unity that is why he says so ignorance um, na, action is an ignorance and knowledge i mean ignorance is also so they will not mutually fight they are complementary the more action you do you get little bit of name and fame the mind will say let's do more we will get more name and fame we will be established the other day you, you were discussing about the music and the art and all that music all this what happens is you start maybe you started as a pure uh, talent in itself is it it should have elevated the mind but what happens once you start giving performance then the praise comes then you forget and all importance is audience something which would have taken you to godward or to unity you are lost in the audience there is very very great saint in south india tyagaraja he says for the advaita siddhi music is a sopana is a step towards music the sublimity of the music the music will soothe the mind the mind will get concentrated and it will attain to its state of peacefulness sometime once the mind gets the taste that's enough you know once you get the taste you start craving for it so somehow create the taste half the job is half the fight is finished because the mind will go behind that taste if we create the taste for higher knowledge the mind will run behind it so half the defeat means fight is won you don't have to every time bring it back and put it every time you it goes and you bring it back to the atman <laughs> create the taste for that we have to work hard once the taste is created half the battle is finished the mind will go by itself you don't have to tell because the mind knows there is infinite joy there. after all it's natural for the mind to crave joy it is used to so when we try to give at first it will refuse it will not like but slowly constantly giving it it will take the, get the taste first when i uh, we went to bengal we never liked the food that we are we are from south i never liked it but slowly slowly i got used to now i like it it's like that the mind will get see my shri ramakrishna says mind is like a child it is leave me leave me leave me i want to go i want to go i want to do what i want you can't say hey you will never do it that no it will all the more rebel you have to casually bring it under your control where you have to love it you should never hate your mind you have never hate your state of your being bring it calm it slowly this is how taming of the shrew it's like that bring it and your control then once it becomes your friend the process of purification gets accelerated and we reach our goal very soon so as soon as the clouds go the sun is there and a cloudy day there is no sun we pant for it but when the clouds are moved sun comes out so when the knowledge goes i mean ignorance goes the self effulgent atman is already there oh the pandal parichinnai va gnanat 
ತನ್ನಾಶೇ ಸತಿ ಕೇವಲ ಸ್ವಯಂ ಪ್ರಕಾಶತೆ ಖ್ಯಾತ್ಮ ಮೇಘಸ್ಪಾಯುವಾನಿವ ಮೇಘ ಅಪಾಯ ಅಂಶುಮಾನಿವ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಗ್ನೋರೆನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ದ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಿಎಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಇನ್ ಸಮಚ್ ವೆನ್ ಇಗ್ನೋರೆನ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಾಯ್ ದ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ವಿಚ್ ಡಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅಡ್ಮಿಟ್ ಎನಿ ಆಫ್ ಮಲ್ಟಿಪ್ಲಿಸಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಎನಿ ಮಲ್ಟಿಪ್ಲಿಸಿಟಿ ವಾಟ್ಸ್ ಆಗಿದೆ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ರಿವೀಲ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಬಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದ ಸನ್ ವೆನ್ ದ ಕ್ಲೌಡ್ ಇಸ್ ವಿ ಮೂವ್ ವಿ ಸಾ ದ ಇಗ್ನೋರೆನ್ಸ್ ದ ಸೂಪರ್ ಇಂಪೋಸಿಷನ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ವೆರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಡ್ಯೂ ಟು ಇಗ್ನೋರೆನ್ಸ್ ಡ್ಯೂ ಟು ಇಗ್ನೋರೆನ್ಸ್ ಐ ಹೂ ಆಮ್ ಇನ್ಫಿನಿಟ್ ಆತ್ಮನ್ ನಾನ್ ಡ್ಯೂಯಲ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ ಮೈ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಎ ಸೈಕೋಫಿಸಿಕಲ್ ಆರ್ಗನಿಸಮ್ a woman sanyasini indian hindu look at how many things i am putting on the pure self these are all the clouds covering the pure self which is which is in us once through reason through analysis through introspection through meditation constantly when we reason ವಿಚಾರ ಆತ್ಮ ವಿಚಾರ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಡೂ ದ ಕ್ಲೌಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಗ್ನೋರೆನ್ಸ್ ಮೂವ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಇಂಟೆಲಿಜೆಂಟ್ ಆತ್ಮನ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ರಿವೀಲ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ವಿ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಡೂ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ದರಿ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಪ್ಯೂರ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬಿನ್ ಥಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ಅವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಆಸ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಬಿಕಮ್ ಪ್ಯೂರ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಪ್ಯೂರ್ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ಸೇಸ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಬಿಕಮ್ ಪ್ಯೂರ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಪ್ಯೂರ್ so instead of stressing on our limitations our weakness why not we stress on our purity doesn't matter for the time being it might not but in time it will make a deep impression on our mind and it will save us from the greatest difficulty agnana kalusham jeevam ಜ್ಞಾನಾಭ್ಯಾಸಿರ್ಮಲ ಸ್ವಯಂ ನಶ್ಯೇತ್ ಜಲಂ ಗತಕರೇಣುವತ್ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಹೌ ಆರ್ ವಿ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ನಾಲೆಡ್ಜ್ ಮಾತಾಜಿ ಸೊ ಯು ಸಿ ಐ ಸಿ ಯು ಆರ್ ಇನ್ಫಿನಿಟ್ ಆತ್ಮನ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಪ್ಯೂರ್ ಸೊ ಥಿಂಕ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ದ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಸೊ ಥಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ಈಸ್ ಎನ್ ಆಕ್ಟ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಮಾಡಿಫಿಕೇಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಟು ಥಿಂಕ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ದೇ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಮಾಡಿಫಿಕೇಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ so how can a modification a mind which has a modification bring a non dual experience that is why he is saying so repeated practice doesn't matter it is a um, modified modification of you know you, uh, you have read the yoga you have uh, patanjali's yoga sutra you re- uh, read there you read about the um modifications of the mind vritti vrittis so vritti gnana this knowledge is conceptual knowledge it is a knowledge with modification the mind is there modification is there to have an advaitic experience complete the mind has to be negated the mind has to vanish no mind state alone will bring you the advaitic vision but we have a mind which is saying i am brahman i am pure i am atman i am the pure light so there is a modification how can a non dual experience come this is the problem here it is it's the problem is not for you and me people ordinary people like us who are very philosophical who are very have gone from in subtlety they will pose this questions so that is why shankara is saying how through constant practice repeated practice the embodied that is the atman which is subject to which has involved itself in this body mind complex i told you that is called a jiva embodied soul is a jiva and what is the stain that i am this body i have this happiness i have this sorrow i have this all these limitations these are the stain so when by the repeated practice of the knowledge all this ignorance goes and what happens what about that modification the mind is still there you can say mataji the mind is still there 
I am the Atman. So this type of Tantara says, it disappears, this mind disappears like the powder of Katakana disappears after it is cleansed muddy water. You will un not understand this. I will have to explain. See, in uh, mud is a foreign element in the water. In Ganges, you know, in India, we bring the water from the Ganges and we use it for the worship and all that. The Ganges water, naturally, it's a river water, it's muddy. What we do is we bring and we put this katakas uh, seed. We uh, rub it and we take it or we powder it. A small amount of powder is put in it and then the, mind, the water becomes clear, crystal clear and we take away the pure water. Now you ask, where did the uh, powder go? The powder has dissolved. In the same way, the mind which has become very transparent, the only impression the mind carries is, I am the Atman, I am the pure one, I am the self. And that modification will be engulfed in the ever-present effulgent Atman's light. Like you take a candle out, maybe morning, four o'clock, you needed a torch or a candle, but by six o'clock, the sunlight has come the candle doesn't serve its purpose. What has happened? The sun's rays have engulfed the candle light. It doesn't anymore. The candle light is there, maybe. But that light is engulfed by the sun's light. In the same way, when the Atman is realized, that tiny bit of impression is absorbed. It just gets dissolved in the self-knowledge. And it becomes an immediate knowledge. So long we had conceptual knowledge that I am the Atman, I am this, I am the pure, I am the infinite. The sort of knowledge we had. But with immediate knowledge, it just disappears or gets dissolved in that. Samsara Swapna Tulyohi Ragad Veshadi Sankulaha Swakale Satya Vadbhati Prabodhe Satya Sadbhavet. So how long do we, will I have this ignorance, this superimposed world I will be perceiving? How long am I going to perceive? That is the answer. The world filled with attachment and aversion and the rest is like a dream. See, we had our young, younger days when, when we were childhood, so many things happened. Now, it looks like a dream. We cannot. We have to only mentally experience that. And this type of experience we had so many in our previous birth, which we do not even know. That is why Shankara says, this world is like a dream. And it appears real as long as I dream. As long as I dream, it is real. In the dream, sometimes we, we become aware that it's a dream. That means to say that much of, um, uh, what do you call, that much awakening was there. When we have wake up, to wake up, we have woke up. So that is why we could say, oh, it's a dream. But usually when we dream, we dream. It's real for us. The nightmares, are, it's true. As long as we dream, it is true. But it becomes unreal only when we wake up to the reality. In the same way, whatever may be this universe, however bitter, however beautiful the experience might may be, it is just nothing but a dream. The moment we wake up to reality, it's not that. It's gone. It becomes unreal. So this waking up to reality, is what we are trying to do as a spiritual practice. Tavat satyavam, tavat satyam jagad bhati, shukti karajatam yatha, yavan agnyayate brahma, sarva deshthanam advayam. The world appears to be real as long as the non dual Brahman which is the basis of all, is not known. 
which is like illusion of the silver in an oyster shell. Until and unless the adhisthana, the substratum, the basis, this whole variegated universe, including my body, mind, intellect, ego, everything is like a silver in the oyster shell. Once the Atman is realized, we see the shen, not the silver. The moment we realize our true nature as infinite, pure, non-dual, then the apparently transformed universe vanishes. At least subjectively it vanishes. Like when you go walk in the desert, we see the mirage and sometimes we, we may not know that it is mirage, we take it for granted it, as a real, as real. But once we understand that it is mirage, we have known, oh, there's nothing such a thing as water or flower or anything, tree, trees or anything, it's nothing but a mirage. Of course, we have known it, we have known it mirage. But next day, if you walk, you get the same, but with that flashes this subtle idea that difference that this is not real. If this this much, if the philosophy serves, it has served our purpose that we will not do mistake, we will not do wrong thing, and we will try to go towards our ideal, which is self-realization, we will be heading towards that. So with this, I finish this topic. We have finished seven verses. The next seven verses, next month we will have. Now then, there's some time for question, question and answer session. And pass the mic around. Thank you, Madhuji. That was um, quite um, enthralling. Um, you talked about the closed fist and the space inside the fist and the space inside the hall and the space outside. It would seem, therefore, that if we can demolish the walls of the hall, we would become one with what's outside. The only thing that's stopping us is is actually the walls or this body. That's... So it would seem like getting rid of this body would be would be a, a way of doing it, but it, it would, can't be. I can't just shoot myself. That doesn't work. Um, is it so, sort of like it's like a demolition job? Somehow I have to sort of um, get myself out of get the body out of the way, but it can't be done just by suicide or something. Like that. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's like it's like when you demolish a tall building, it has to be carefully planned and structured, and all the explosive yes. charges have to be carefully placed so the building just collapses down in one yeah. spot and it doesn't so, hurt others, and others are not. Yes, so it has only... to be that. So the the spiritual practices are almost exactly. that that dismantling of this body to let the inside merge with the outside. Yeah, that yeah. that this, is that is the part role played by the sadhu. It's negative, denying, removing. Yeah, denying. make it sound so easy, don't I? It's so easy. <laughs> but, but look, what we we are seeking is something infinite existence. Why should it be so uh, easy? If it is something easy, it's not worth achieving, not worth trying. Because it is difficult, it's all the more its value. You go pay two dollars, you get a plant. But if you want to buy a diamond, how much? You have to pay a lot. So small um, joys, you get it. But if you want infinite joy, infinite existence, you have to work. You have to work. And the work is, it's negative. Because you are already infinite. You are already infinite existence, infinite consciousness. You are infinite, absolute. Just, yeah. just remove this impediment, this the body. This wrong notion. It's all mental. Always, it, the sadhana is mainly, it is, that's why it's knowledge. It is not something you work. 
what is a test to show how far you have got your renunciation or attachment it help, helps now if you have to make a big donation of your hard earned money then you think twice because it's my money i worked hard so when somebody does generously that means to say they are not possess the money doesn't possess them you know we don't possess money money possesses us there's the problem if we possess money it's all right when money possesses us you are in trouble so you don't become slave of money so that is why you can do that so to that extent you have freed yourself from this very important obstacle called as kanchan shri ramakrishna says the obstacle to spiritual life is two kamini kanchan woman and gold these are the two so you have freed yourself much from it so that is that is how it is so these are all helps help for us so we can test our knowledge through karma yoga how much of the ego is there how much of self is there how much is our views each for self this for self examination it's very good it's helpful that is how we reduce the opaqueness of the mind the thickness the thick dust or dirt and what is dirt and dust this idea that i am body that's the biggest that's the source that's the basic thing for that constant there is one book i do not know what the book i forgot it must be advaita siddhi or something like that it says asupte amrityu nayeta vedanta chintana you have to carry on with your vedantic reasoning till you fall asleep in the bed till the last breath of your life carry on because do not know if you have got if you get the realization fine if it is not carry on we should have that perseverance to do it and gaudapada he says the will the persevering will says i will empty the ocean with a blade of grass imagine you are dipping a blade of grass dipping it here dipping it here how long it's it's impossible rather you can say but a persevering mind which is determined will say i will do it so that is the persevering slowly steadily we work on in the right direction which we will reach we will get it we will be what do you call it what is that decluttering decluttering of the mind which will be done it's decluttering is that's always the job the sadhana is always negative because the atman is always there you are not going to bring the realization it is always there only that you have to rediscover it you have put so many coverings on it that the self effulgent light is not coming out at all it's all covered we move on by one how by denying the body by standing aside and not identifying yours with the mind mind plays a lot of tricks we have to know that we are separate so that the vagaries of the mind will not pull me out so this is the path this is the thing through this you will attain anything else pranam mataji my name is chandran very good ah. I've been a long term student of vedanta especially the adi shankara siddhanta and gospel of ramakrishna and some swami ji's books i get a feeling sometimes i can't expect how how or not to study and reflect and listen i cannot escape the feeling that our all this a bit too world negating yeah. i mean we are you are been talking about destroying as our friend was saying destroying the covering the, the, the that seemingly covers the light from within so that it can shine so has, has this done a bit of harm to countries like india where all this philosophy emanated in the first place how we become a bit pessimist yeah uh, pessimistic and irresponsible and world negating we have allowed ourselves to be conquered and subjugated etc have all this emanated and you was mentioned gaudapada scholars have been repeatedly pointing out that he may be influenced or 
he wanted to counteract the Buddhistic influence that was spreading. So in his Karikas, the Mandukya Upanishad, he is attacked. He is attacked, and he also, st I mean, starts to sound like nihilistic, a little nihilistic, a bit uh, world negating, um, which is quite contrary to the Purushartha and contrary to the very, uh, very uh, um, flavor of the Gita, which is all about. Look, <laughs> the Advaita Vedanta. I understand your uh, train of thought. Advaita Vedanta is not world negating. It's not world negating. It is the wrong application of Vedanta is the cause. Full knowledge is strengthening. But half knowledge is dangerous. So that is what has happened. These Vedantic ideas are not, have, was not applied properly for the thing. Once I know that I am not this body and the pure self. And I also know I, I possess a body. What I do, if, if truly if I have this knowledge, if I'm truly convinced that I am not this body, I am not this mind, I am the pure self, what do I do with this body and mind? Do you think I'll go and sit and uh, roll in the ground? No. I will employ this body and mind for the good of the people who are still suffering. This is the part, and absolutely will give. I'm, I, I don't want to mention the person's name. A person who at present is there, who is a Vedantist, he has turned the very face of India, he has, and the world. That is because proper application of spiritual knowledge to the mundane world. This comes when properly seen. What happens is in the hands of uh, degenerate people, Vedanta be becomes an escapism. And this is the common lot. When something becomes very, uh, what do you call, popular, this is what happens. Advaita Vedanta is not for everybody. It is for very few handful. And Gaudapada is a core, hardcore Vedanta. Very few people are there who can deny the world like him. So we don't criticize him. We salute him. God bless how many lives he must have taken in order to get that uh, thunderbolt will. Will like a thunderbolt. It's not easy. Vedanta is not world negating. It is world affirming. It affirms the world. Not as what you and I see, as God himself has become this world and its being. So you serve the God. You, everyone, every face you see is the divine. So you adore, you serve. This is the practical application. This is the practical Vedanta, which Ramakrishna and Vivekananda have brought it. Take the monk who came to Dakshinesha and was doing um, immoral acts and said, the world is unreal, so my acts are also unreal. That's the way that what, uh, Vedanda, is, Advita Vedanda is applied. And that's the cause of the de degeneration of the, uh, of the country, not the Advaita Vedanda actually, how people are, apply it. And that is why Shankaracharya is so particular about the eligibility, eligibility, eligibility. Adhikari, Adhikari, Adhikari. Non-eligible people practice and they make a caricature of it. They bring it. So it's the mistake of the people who have applied. Very quick follow-up question. I won't take too much time, uh, Robert. Very quick. Hopefully it will benefit everyone. Um, very quick. Uh, how do we take this message to the people in their 20s and 30s? You are it's, it's, you are saying it's not it's not for everybody. Then they will they will say, okay, how do I, I mean? And you are saying it's like using a blade of grass to take water out of an ocean and all that. It is. Okay, is it only for 75, 80 year olds? No, or no, no, how no. It is not. <laughs> that is why I that is why I told you. <laughs> Vedanta has different 
uh, what do you call gradation. Steps, yeah. gradation. Uh, yeah. So you needn't have to be a core Vedantist, Advaitist. Advaita is at the end. You start from where you are. Start from where you are. Keep the duality. Doesn't matter. An Advaitist may look down upon you. Doesn't matter. But we will keep the duality. That this universe is a creation of God. Okay. I will have to protect this ecosystem. Let me in, in not indulge. Let me save this something for the planet. Start with this. Try to save this planet. Here is Dvaita. You are so fond of Dvaita. Everybody, everything in the world is affirmed here. Mm -hmm. Start it. Reduce one's selfishness. If you cannot think of yourself in somebody's body, doesn't matter. We all are human beings. Spiritually, we are one. This type of ideas you can apply. Apply even one small idea of this Vedanta in your in our daily life, even for five minutes. That will do good. Thank you. Thank you. Start it one step, one step slowly. But if we are sincere, true. And Sri Ramakrishna says, Man muk ekhara. Speech and mind should be one. Mm -hmm. If that is made, every day we'll be progressing. Mm -hmm. Every day we will be. Some progress will be made. So this, these things are made, the elders have made all this for us, for our sake. We'll be. Time for more questions. I suppose. That's it. Okay. All right, then. Thank you, you. Shida Panaji. We look forward to the future uh, talks on Amabara every month. So we are hoping the yoga class will be starting this Thursday. That's from 10 to 11.15 a.m. And we have the next spiritual evening discussion, fortnight discussion led by Gautra Banerjee. That's coming up this Friday night. And we also have next Sunday a talk by Gautra Banerjee on you are the maker of your destiny. So you're most welcome to attend all of those events. And we look forward to having more uh, the monthly talks on self-knowledge. I imagine it'll go on possibly even into the next year. I think there are enough verses there. <laughs> hmm. Just fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well we're kind of used to having a bit of a mixture of events here and then there are celebrations that come up in between so not not quite possible anyway all right thanks everybody for joining us today